Hello and welcome to the sixth video in the video series onboarding to the um, Eclipse Data Space Connector and today we're going to talk about um, the service loader mechanism. So the service loader essentially is a mechanism which um, binds a concrete implementation to an interface without ever having to instantiate it manually. This is pretty similar to current um, dependency injection modules um, this is a Java feature, I think it was introduced in 1.6. So what it essentially does is it goes through a special list of files um, which contain the class names of the implementors and then it binds them to the um, respective interface. In the EDC we're using this mechanism for extension loading. Let me show you how that's done. As you can see, this is a typical runtime. Most of the runtimes that you will encounter when developing for EDC will not differ all that much. So you can, so the, so the first thing that um, is worth mentioning is the default service extension context. This is an object which holds all service registrations. This is pretty similar to a dependency, dependency injection framework like Juice or any other dagger or so. This is a class that holds the service interface, that binds an interface to a service implementation. So that this context then has this method load service extensions. Let's open it up. Load service extensions. Yeah, there it is. So it loads all the implementors of the service extension interface by going through the these special files that I mentioned before. Um, essentially, what needs to be done is you create a file in the resources slash meta env slash services subdirectory. The name of the file must be the same as the fully qualified class name of the interface. And in that file, there is nothing but the fully qualified class name of the implementor class. So th this, is, this is not something that we developed in the EDC. This is a Java standard feature, so everyone can use that. Um, so essentially, this uh, loads all this, this returns a list of all the implementors of the service extension class. Um, this uses the ser a service locator. And the service locator is in turn an interface for which there is an implementation. And as you can see, this now uses the Java util service loader. So it's basically a bit of um, code around the Java service loader. We, we can we can load uh, implementors of a class. We can uh, load implementors. So this can be an, a class. This can be an interface. You can use this for it for whatever you like. You don't have to use it for extensions. You can use this for your own implementations if you wanted to um, create such a structure. Uh, we can also use uh, we can also load uh, a singleton, which means that. Um, this will throw an exception when there is more than one implementor of an interface. Um, can be useful if if, you sh if there should just be one, you know, one vault extension, for example. If that's one requirement, you can you can load it as a singleton. Um, so let's get back to the extension context. The extension, um, the default service extension context, will load all. Um, services, so all service extensions. So a service extension can have a loading phase, which means it's basically a temporal um, ordering of extensions. So there are a few extensions that must be loaded before any other extension. We can, of course, do this with dependencies, but that would mean that every other extension must express a dependency on the earlier extension, which is just cumbersome. So we introduced loading phases of which there are two. There is the uh, primordial loading phase, as you can see here, and there is the default loading, loading phase. 
you should not create an extension that's in the primordial um, phase without good reason. Usually you should create them in the default loading phase, um, which, which is also the default value. So you usually don't need to touch this. Also, ex dependencies can express, uh, sorry, um, extensions can express dependencies. That means that one extension might need another extension to work or it might need to make sure that another extension is already loaded because it requires services that that extension has registered. Let's just um, take a look at, for example, the OAuth2 extension. Every extension can express the downward dependencies with requires this means that, for example, the OAuth2 extension requires the HTTP client to be um, to be there. This is just an arbitrary string, so um, there must always be an extension that provides a feature, and then there can be an extension that requires that feature. So the OAuth2 extension provides IAM, which is um, access management, basically, and then provides the OAuth2 feature. The uh, HTTP client feature is provided by, let's make a search, by the, um, by the core services extension. So um, that's what this uh, provides. As you can see, it's provided here. So this means for the default service extension context, once it detects that there is a requires in, this, in, an, in an extension, it will then look, um, it will order all the extensions, the, the loading time of each extension, and order it such that the dependencies can be resolved. Of course, there might be cyclic um, dependencies, which would raise an exception, a cyclic dependency exception. So that's essentially how dependency management works. So then once all the primordial and the default extensions are loaded and they are sorted, um, there's another thing to mention. So primordial extensions cannot have dependencies to default extensions. That just doesn't work because primordial extensions are always loaded before default extensions. However, default extensions can theoretically have downward dependencies to primordial extensions, even though that is rarely the case. It will then order, sort all the primordial ones. It will also it will then sort the default extensions, um, and then return all the loaded extensions. The connector runtime then receives all the service extensions. Um, these are not they they haven't been um, started or initialized yet. It's just a sorted list of service extensions. It goes then ahead and, um, and boots them, which is done in the extensions loader. This one contains, amongst other things, the boot service extension method. What that does essentially is it calls the initialize and the start method of every extension. So here's the thing that um, the context, the default service context, is, like I said before, is basically the dependency injection context. So every extension should do its initialization, like getting settings, instantiating other classes, must be done in that initialize method, or should be done there. Um, also, ser service registration or registering of other services, like, I don't know, uh, a logger, or mm, logger is a bad example, or, um, any other service that you might want to register must be done in initialize and can be done um, against the uh, service extension context. The extension loader also loads the vault. Mm, the vault, while being an extension, has sort of a special meaning together with the monitor. So the vault and the monitor, they are two special extensions. The reason is that you probably want logging right from the beginning. So loading the monitor is done in, um, in, in, a, in, a, in a prior step 
here before you will before you uh, load and boot all the extensions because you want to have the monitor the logger ready for action uh, once that's done and the vault is also loaded prior to everything else because you might have a monitor that um, requires a vault for example um, if you have I don't know, a log stash or an Azure logging backend that requires a client secret and the client ID which is stored in the vault and the logger actually already requires um, the vault to run. Also the, in turn the vault might want to log something out. This, this means that um, these two things are sort of special and they happen at a very very early stage earlier than anything else. Right, so that is basically how we load extensions in the Eclipse data and the decision which extensions are actually available in a runtime are made at build time. So in your build file, let's see, maybe we can open up one of them, one of the samples. So in the build file, we decide which modules we have in our compiled code and that decides which module or which extensions are actually picked up by the service loader mechanism. So if you were to add any other module here, say for example uh, one of the Azure ones or one of the AWS ones, let's use the AWS S3 provision extension. We'll just write AWS uh, sorry, extensions AWS S3 provision. This would mean that the extension inside this module, which in this case is called AWS provision extension, will get picked up on the next rebuild and will be available and will be loaded and will be available um, in the at runtime in the class path. 